Hello out there, you and YouTube land. God bless you here. We're at least the Brother Ministries tonight here in Pinkneyville, Illinois. We got uh, Prophet Rick Reagan got a message from the heart of God from the throne room and Prophetess Linda Reagan's with us tonight and, and me and Betty and Alicia and all the least of Brother Church there. We give you all the praise and glory and honor and today is May the 5th, 2012. Give them a big wave out there, least Brother Church again, Brother Prophet Rick Reagan. Praise the Lord. Welcome to the least of Brother Church. Well, first off, I want to say, I want to say that I'm grateful to be here tonight and be with you tonight. Uh, you all have been on our mind all day today, on and off. You know, I've been working, but the Lindsay has been on the mind all day. And, and I believe God has done great things through this ministry. God has granted an increase. That's always an evidence that God's in something. God may start small, or the work may start small, but when he gets on it, he multiplies and increases. God multiplies and increases. And again, I want to thank you. Me and George have been friends, brethren, for quite a while and had a lot of fellowship. And, and we're just believing that the will of God and purpose of God will be accomplished tonight. And I'm going to ask Brother George, uh, the pastor of this assembly, if you would pray before we, just where you're at, and uh, then we'll give what God's given us. The Lord Jesus we give you the praise, glory, honor tonight. We come in the humble service, most high God, this anoint uh, prophet Rick uh, lifts a clay for your glory, your message from the throne room, and every person here tonight. We praise you and we thank you, Lord Jesus, for forgiving us for our sins, saving us for eternal life. We know you're returning soon, Lord. We know there's a sign in heaven tonight, the super moon, Lord. You say that. Be signs in heaven above, Lord. And there'll come a day when the sun will be darkened and the moon will turn to blood. And we know Jesus Christ, King of kings, the Lord of lords, the Messiah, the Savior, be riding the clouds, bringing us home, Lord. What a day that will be. We've been waiting for all these years, Lord. Jesus Christ coming home, take his children home. And we're getting ready, God. It's going to be beautiful like a thief in the night. You'll be splitting the eastern skies, riding the clouds, Lord. And the trumpet of God, the voice of archangels, and if we walk them by a cemetery, we can see the old dead your eyes first. They'll be popping out out of them coffins for the glory be to God. And then that's alive. Be caught up in the air forevermore by our Lord and Savior, and Messiah, Jesus Christ, King of King and Lord of Lords. Oh, what a day that will be. Just to anoint Brother Rick tonight. He's your prophet to the nation. Just to anoint him. This is your video on YouTube. Consecrated, dedicated, committed, sanctified. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Somebody don't know you, the personal Savior tonight, Lord Jesus. Save their soul, deliver them, heal them. For the glory be to God. We love you, Jesus. Holy name. Amen, amen. If I could ask you to briefly stand uh, while we take your text, and you, those that can. The Bible declares in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 25 and verse 14, For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling in a far country, who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And in Matthew chapter 25 and verse 15, it says, And to one he gave five talents, to another he gave two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. You may be seated. The scripture declares that he gave his own servants and delivered them his goods. You know, the Bible says that every man has his proper gift of God. You've got some natural ability that God has endowed you with. Some people have it in a singing voice or a musical instrument. It may be you have a knack in mechanics. You might have an ability to paint and might paint trees and landscapes. But to every man is given that scripture is in 1 Corinthians 7, 7. He says, every man hath his proper gift of God. You know, God didn't call not many mighty, not many noble, not many wise. But you know who he called? the simple things, the weak Amen. things, to confound the wisdom of the wife. God uses those whom He calls. 
So that's why the Scripture declare to make your calling an election sure. Now, there's also spiritual gifts. You know, I said natural things that come from God, but there's also spiritual gifts. And 1 Corinthians 10, or excuse me, verse 11 of the 12th chapter, the, the Scriptures record the gifts of the, of the Spirit of God. But he said, all these work at that one and self same Spirit, meaning the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. It says he divides them severally as he wills. So we can determine that it is God's will to those that receive him and to those that are baptized in his Spirit that you can count on several spiritual gifts. And the Bible says that we can do what? All things in our own strength. No, it doesn't say that. He said we can do all things, Betty, through Christ Amen. which strengtheneth us. He enables us. Oh, my goodness, I might get a little loud. Oh. But let's go back to that parable a little bit. I want to talk tonight about potential. What have you potential? You may look at yourself, well, I don't know how to do much. But with God working with you, you have unlimited potential. Amen. Amen. Now, the problem is, so often we look at ourselves in the mirror we look at our past. And so often our past is kind of like an example or a, a, a blueprint of our future if we let it. If you let what people say, well, you're never going to amount to nothing. If you listen to people sometimes, and, and it depends on whose report you believe. But if you believe this report, Amen. Amen. if you believe what the Bible says, yes. let me tell you how it's going to end. God declares the end from the beginning. When all the dust clears and settles, when all the smoke and mirrors diminish and leave, I'll tell you what's going to be standing at the last. This word endureth. Forever and ever. Jesus said, My word shall not pass away. Amen. And those that believe in Him and trust and obey Him, they will overcome and conquer. Can I hear an amen? amen. amen. I'm going to tell you a little bit about that parable that we started in Matthew. As we read verses 14 and 15. Verse 16 says about receiving something from God. Are you using what God's given you? I heard the trumpet tonight. I heard the guitar and the singing. I heard some people that said church when it was time to say to church. But we need to think about what God's called us to do. He called us out, no doubt, out of darkness in this marvelous light to save us, to sanctify us, to set us free, to walk in the light as He's in the light, but He also called you to do something. You're a part of the church, but to do the work, the work that God has you to do. Now I'm going to go on and read Matthew 25, verses 16 on down. Now here's the result. This is a parable. It's an illustration. He gave one man, how many, how many is this? Five talents. He gave another this many. How many is that? Two. And he gave one, one. And how did he give them? According to their ability to do it. So you can't say that God's given me something to do that I don't have the ability to do because it's already been divinely ordained. So we can't use that excuse. Can't do that. And what happened after he gave the talents to the five to the one, the two to the other? 
But the one, we had the one that didn't do anything other than bury it with what God gave him. The five, they made another five. They multiplied. I can remember when this ministry was much smaller. But what has happened? God is added. Amen. He's multiplied and increased. And he is not done. So the five produced another five. The two produced another two. It's occupying and working till he comes. Thank God the truth is he is coming. Amen. But he said to occupy till he comes. So that means doing something for the kingdom. Doing something. But the one. But the one. What he did when he received the talent. He went and digged in the earth. Who's ever dug a hole? Oh, yeah. I've dug a hole. Hey me too. Me too. And he put that talent in there in the ground and covered it up. He buried it. He had a funeral for that talent. See? There's going to be a payday someday. There's going to be rewards and there's going to be retribution or judgment. Well, the Lord came back and here in this illustration in Matthew, he, he made an account of those people. The one that had the five said, Lord, I made another five. Let me tell you what the Lord of that servant said. Well done! Thou good and faithful servant. He commended him. He bragged on him. The Lord did a little bragging on the man. And this is what he said. He said, you've been faithful over a few things. He said, I'm going to make you ruler over many things. Promotion! God will increase not only his things but your things now think about that and he did the same thing to the two he told him well done because he did something he, he worked for the Lord he obeyed him but when he got to the man that had the one talent he got down there and Here's the answer that the man gave when the Lord confronted him. You know, sometimes we don't like confrontation and we don't want to, you know, come up to, we don't really want to face the reality sometimes that it's unpleasant in our life. We've all done that. Don't get me wrong. But here's what the Lord, the, the, the reason this man buried it. He said, Lord, I knew that you were a hard man. Look at his perspective on God. That was truthfully said. It's recorded. But that is not the way we need to look at God. He's, he loves us. He, he, yes, he's also a God of wrath to them that depart and, and, and don't enter into covenant and, and, and refuse the blood of Jesus and refuse the name of Jesus. But hear this man's opinion. He said, I knew you as a hard man, Lord. Now notice this. That you reaped that that you didn't sow. In other words, if he's going to reap something, who do you think was responsible for sowing it? The man with the talent. See, God's going to expect a harvest through you. Now, you, you might have never looked at it like that. But see, you get down to the word potential. That means you, you can achieve things. It's possible for you to do much more than what you had ever seen yourself do. That you can be used in God much greater than what you might have thought. See how the man, his, his, his angle that he looked at God... You see he, where he was coming from? He just said, I knew you was a hard man. He said, I knew that you reap where you didn't sow. So that means it was up to me to sow so God would grant an increase. And he goes on to say that you also gathered where you didn't straw anything. God depended upon him 
to do something so he couldn't multiply what the man didn't sow. So there was no harvest through this man, through this, this servant. Because the man's perspective, the, his angle, the way he approached things, the way he believed, he didn't believe quite right. You know, the Bible trains us and tells us to believe like the Scriptures tell us. For an example, in Psalms 104 and verse 34, David here says, My meditation, what I think about God, what I think about His Word, it's going to be sweet. I'm going to think that my God's able to do, you know, nothing's too hard for God. He's a, he works miracles then. He does it now. He hasn't changed. And another place in Psalms 119 and 103, the Scripture declares in the Psalms, how sweet are thy words. See, there's people that looking at God and thinking how sweet it is. Oh, Jackie Gleason used to have a little cliche and he would end his show and say, well, how sweet it is. Yeah. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. But see, how sweet our God is. Yeah. But you've got to see, that's got to be your perspective. You've got to get to where you have such a relationship with Jesus Christ that there's a sweetness. You ever had a a romantic encounter that there was just such a sweet. Matter of fact, in, in, in the days gone by, they used to say, are you sweet on them? Remember, you remember that expression? That he was sweet on her or she was sweet on him. But another reason that man didn't do anything, he says, I was afraid. I was afraid to try. See, fear, the Bible says, has torment. See, the Bible says, He that loveth, perfect love, casteth out fear. Amen. You know, Amen. we've got to learn and experience boldness in the Lord. For we are not ashamed of Jesus Christ. Amen. And the Amen. gospel. Amen. And the death. And the burial. And the resurrection. Amen. And the exceeding great and precious Amen. promises. That's how we became a partaker of the divine nature. I was afraid. That's why I didn't do anything. You'd pray somebody might say something to you. You might catch a little slack. But George and others know that sometimes you stand for God, mm -hmm. and everything ain't going to be smooth, is it? No. Said all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. The early church, many of those saints were fed to the lions. That's history. They were burned at the cross. They were persecuted. But they did not lose their faith. Amen. For they knew who they believed. Amen. They were steadfast unto the end. They loved not their lives unto the death. How stable and steadfast we are we in our faith today in this end time, latter day place that we're at. So, what is up to us and what do we need to do? When we obey, God multiplies. Or if we bury and ignore, we don't, we're not doing too good. But see, the good news is with God. There's always that place for a new beginning. Yes. That place of a recognition where you are aware, hey, I think I can do this. God, speak to me. Direct me in what you would have me to do. See, the Bible talks about lazy people. I, there's a time in my life I was lazy. Absolutely lazy. I look for the easiest, less resistant place. But you know what the Bible says about that in Proverbs 13, 4? The soul of the sluggard, and the sluggard is a person that has a disposition to avoid exertion. In other words, they're not too hip on working. In other words, they do anything to get out of it. They're inactive. But see, God wants to put a fire in us. 
For we'll work in his kingdom. We'll work and represent him in what we're able to do and to carry out our calling. Now, the potential that God has put in you, the dream, the vision. The Bible says, make the vision plain and write it down. See, God wants to give you prophetic insights. He wants to show you what you can be, what you have the potential to be. See, there's a number of things you can achieve from this point on. There's things you can achieve. You have the potential. Now, the potential means capable of being or becoming. There was a time in my life, you know, I didn't see much of a future for myself. I was on drugs. My mind was fried. But God made things new. The Bible said, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. God will make things new in your life. He'll give you opportunity. He will bring and make you to where you can fulfill His will. The ability, I'm going on with potential now, that may or may not be developed. In other words, some of your choices, you're going to have to go along with what the Lord wants to see everything that He has prepared for you. You've got to cooperate. You ever heard that word cooperate? You've got to learn to cooperate with God. Because as his sheep, he put forth his own sheep. He goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. As we learn and develop our ears to hear his voice. And the Bible says in John 10 and 5, And a stranger they will not follow but will flee from him for they know not the voice of strangers. It is time, beloved of the Lord, to zero in. If we had rabbit ear antennas to, to position them where we get the best and the clearest picture. It is time to zero in. It's time to recognize the day and the hours, the signs, and the sun and the moon and the stars and the signs of the times. To recognize where we are and whose voice that we're listening to. Now, if we're listening to more on that other voice, it's time that we begin to zero in on the voice of Jesus Christ and the power of His Spirit that we might achieve. That is, bring to pass the potential that God has called you to be and to do. Don't say, what can I do? Say, Lord, what would you have me do? You might not be called to preach. You might not be called to teach, but I'll guarantee you, you are called to your place in the body of Christ. You are called to be there. He calls you out of darkness into His marvelous light. Therefore, make your calling an election sure. Sometimes it takes time to understand and comprehend that these young girls here that's in the congregation tonight, how important is it for them to receive that engrafted word deep into their hearts and take and believe and trust and have their own experience with God to follow the ways of the Lord versus the ways of the, of the devil. To learn how they can depend and trust in the Lord and where they won't lean on only their own understanding but they'll lean to the counsel of God because a dream cometh not now, we've all got dreams, aspirations, and desires. But the Bible says, A dream cometh not, but through the multitude of business. That's action. See, God puts a dream in you, but you've got to work it out. You've got to walk it out. You've got to achieve it. And it's a little at a time as God formulates and shapes and fashions. Twenty years ago, George probably didn't have any idea he'd be doing what he's doing. But he followed the voice of the Lord. And God began to open shape, form, and fashion. Here you have something that exists now, but it didn't exist then. 
And you got to remember, God speaks those things that are not as though they were. Just because you don't see it now with your eyes and you hear it with your ears, it doesn't mean that it's not the plan of God, and it doesn't mean you don't have potential to achieve it. God can multiply this congregation double, triple. You don't see that today. But can it be that way six months down the road? Certainly can. If we'll be a witness, and if we'll ask and invite people, and when they come, being friendly, showing them the love of Christ and being faithful to yourself, you know, to the things of God. But potential, remember, say to God, tonight the message is fulfill your potential. Don't, don't let those lies that come up in your head, well, I can't do nothing. What's he talking about? Yes, you can. Being faithful in the church is doing something. Being faithful in the ministry is doing something. Go talking to your neighbor. Being a good neighbor and letting your light shine is doing something. Being a witness, sharing your faith is doing something to the work of the kingdom. Do you want to see people saved? Do you want to see your loved ones saved? You know, there's a hell to shove and there's a heaven to gain. But it's more than that. It's to know the love of Christ which hath us understanding. To know His love, to feel His love. I thank God today that He is my shepherd. Amen. And listen to what David coins it and, and with a pen. Now I shall not want. Amen. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Would you like to be laid down in green pastures? And be led by the steel walls to restore your soul. Hallelujah. And yet, even though you would walk through the valley of the shadow of death, not to fear evil, not to fear death, because, oh, death, where is thy sting, oh, grave, where is thy victory? But you've got to know Him. You've got to know the resurrected Savior. You have got to be raised up with Him in newness of life to have that level of expectancy and assurance. Do you have it tonight? Do you have it tonight? Do you know Jesus Christ? Have you repented? You know, John the Baptist preached repentance. The baptism of repentance. Have you repented and turned from our past life and lived anew? Have you been truly born again tonight? Do you need healing in your body? Do you believe he's able? And would you make a move? Would you make a move? But I, I want to offer our services and pray for the sick and those that require or, or would ask for prayer tonight. We've seen God do many wonderful works. And I thank God that He is alive. We serve a risen Savior. He's alive. And He does confirm His word with signs following to them that believe. To them that believe. And I'm going to ask Brother George if... Uh, and we'll turn it back to you at this time, but I want to offer our services and pray for the saints, those that really have a need that, that believe tonight, uh, to anoint with oil, and, and we want to bind the works of Satan, sickness and disease, and those that want and desire and believe to be healed, I believe the Lord will touch you tonight. I don't believe we come up here for nothing. I believe it was divinely directed and led. And I'm of the opinion that victory's for someone that will move and then will ask for it. Sometimes you don't have because you don't ask. You have not because you ask not. The Bible says, ask, you shall receive. Seek, you shall find. Knock, and the door will be open. But you've got to be bold enough. I remember one time I was trying to get a job. They wouldn't see me. They just tell me, no, no, no. Well, one Saturday, I'd been in this place about six weeks, something like that, or maybe a little longer, trying to see the guy that had the authority to give me an answer. And they come down, it's about noon on a Saturday, and the secretary said, I'm sorry, he's not going to be able to see you again today. And I said in myself, lady, that's what you think. I will see that man. And I, I waited till he got in his car, I stayed out in my car and waited, Wherever he went with his car, I went with my car. 
He went to the store. I waited outside for him until he got home. Well, it could, in those days, they didn't consider that criminal. But I'm telling you, I wanted it. Amen. I wanted the job. Sometimes like blind Bartimaeus, he said, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy. Or he could have said back, well, I guess it's not God's time. Or it's not God's will. But when they even said, be quiet. Don't trouble the master any further. He threw off that cloak. Signifying that he was a blind man. And he went for it. Amen. And Jesus said, what is it that you would have me do? You see, sometimes you've got to have a little boldness, a little tenacity, a little gumption, as they used to say. Where you'll go for it. Say, yes, that's mine. I see it. I'm going to get it. Getting back to the man. I yelled out, Hey, Bill! He said, What do you want? I said, I've been trying to see you for six weeks. I've got to have a job. I didn't say, Well, I'd kind of like to have one. <laughs> it would be great if I... I said, I want a job. And I know you're the man that can put me. He said, Come back next Saturday. And you know what? That old boy didn't want to do it. The guy I've been talking to. And I had to wait again. Sometimes the old devil will try to disrupt, deter you. And when Bill came down, I said, look, Bill, you told me to come back. Said, here I am. This guy won't see me. He said, he will. He went up and gave me, had a little talk with that old boy. And I'll tell you, he is glad. And he is nice to me then. You see? But sometimes if, if you, you know, that person all the hell, sometimes you've got to show a little perseverance. But that's how it went with me on that day. So I'm saying, the Bible says, you know, come, to the, come boldly to the throne of grace that you might find grace to help in time of need. How bad do you want it? How bad? How much desire do you have? I tell the man, I said, there's come Friday night when I was a kid, I used to walk a half a mile up to the highway and hitchhike 10 miles just to go to the show. Why did I do that? I wanted to go. Come rain, sleet, hail, or snow, I determined to go. And I didn't let a little raindrop stop me. I didn't let a little snow stop me. I went. How bad do you want it tonight? How bad are you willing to extend your faith and believe what he already said and did? Well, on the cross, he said it's finished. Those stripes were for your healing. That bloodshed was for your forgiveness of sin. But do you really believe it? And are you willing to act on it? Brother George, if you'd come. Thank God. Praise God. Praise God. <clears throat> You heard the word of God from God's prophet, me and Colonel Rick, I guess we know each other. Twenty five years or so he kinda of kidded brother, he kinda of liked the old coal miners, you know, forever, you know, the, the old coal miners he spun a mile off and humble certain both times and we've been here a long time and she's been faithful and you heard the message tonight. The message only good the messenger. Anybody need prayer tonight? Come up here. Rick's anointed on the Holy Ghost and God and Jesus. Anybody need some prayer for deliverance or healing or just a prayer? This is your opportunity to come up here tonight up front. Amen. Here, you, Amen. here you some people here, Brother Rick. Hallelujah. If you would, brother, get out, out in front there. That's all right. Well, I don't really need the mic. Okay. Right. Hallelujah. Honey, why don't you move over there? You would? Just leave it on and just move over there. Brother, what, what, do, you, what do you need and want from God? What's that? I don't know what you're saying. Grab, 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 gr
McDonald over there when you do. Yeah, if, if they keep clear here, they can see. That's fine. Thank you. Appreciate that. Because we've had some problem lines that we couldn't get, and you know, it's it, it's. Uh, but our brother's got an issue there, and he's writing down his request. We're believing God. Let's, 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 let's be in agreement. It's important to believe and be in agreement. Be in agreement. One accord, unity, faith. We're in agreement with what He says in His Word, and we're in agreement with the Holy Ghost that nothing has changed in the kingdom. We pray that when he had cancer, that God healed him. If he cut his tongue out, and didn't hold his head, they could terribly don't have a tongue. I pray some way when God would grow on the tongue back the Lord. Well, I tell you what. God knows what I need. You do your part. Amen. That's enough. That's enough. Hallelujah. If you would, brother, lift your hands up. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you tonight. Lord, we thank you for the ministering spirits round about us, the angelic beings in our midst. We thank you for the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name and the gifts of the Spirit. Who cut it about? Oh, Lord, we thank you for the power of God present. Hallelujah. This brother's request for is that the Lord knows what I need and do my part. Hallelujah. And I'm going to say this, brother, you do your part and you believe with me. Lord, in the name of Jesus, you were able to break forth that, that the tongue that was to the Lord, I pray for a rolling of miracles, a creative miracle in the name of Jesus. Lord, to your glory and honor, through and to your name, Lord, that you would bring about healing and recovery from this damage of cancer. Lord, that you bring back skin and tissue and will form that tongue, Lord. That that tongue would be an orator, a tongue of an orator, Lord. Hallelujah. That he would be a silver tongue orator. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I ask for it begin to grow and begin to replace and reform. That people would be amazed, but it's just one of the many things that you do in the name of Jesus. I pray you fill him with the Holy Ghost. That you endue him with power in the name of Jesus. Let that anointing and unction of the Holy Ghost flow throughout his body. Bringing healing, recovery, and restoration. That you would give him a backbone like a saw log. That he would stand strong and straight for the kingdom in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Brother, try to say something. Talk. Okay. And I, did you say hello? Did I hear hello? Now you're speaking plainer. Is everybody hearing this? Did, did, did you think he's improved? Amen. Hey, keep talking, brother. I'm, I'm acting. Now you said do my part, now do your part. Okay, I'm hearing praise the Lord. Can he speak that plain before? He's doing better. He's doing better. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. These need to shrink in the name of Jesus. In the name ooh, of Jesus. Dear, say it too. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I curse these formations. Hallelujah. The food that they shrivel up and leave his body. No impediment, no resistance to him speaking. Strengthen those vocal cords. What's your name, brother? Herbert? Hobie. Hobie. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for healing miracle. That, that was what you wanted, wasn't it, Hobart? Hallelujah. Hobie. That was what you wanted, right? Thank you, Lord. Say, praise the Lord. Praise, praise the Lord. Lord. I can hear it plainer. Can you, can you tell it's plainer yourself? Yes, I can. Praise God. Did you feel the power of God on you? You felt the power of God on you. Thank God. Lord, seal this work in the name of Jesus. Seal it, complete it, bring it totally, completely to pass. It may be a testimony and honor to your power 
in the name of Jesus. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Oh! Oh, God, I don't know. Oh, my, my, my. There's power in your name, Lord. Oh, my goodness. Ooh. <laughs> Hallelujah. There's joy unspeakable and full of glory. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Brother, I want you to stay close because I may need your help praying. Got any specific pains that would be the major in your legs? Okay. I want you to I want you to sit down in that seat right there in that pew. Are you trying to get what? Okay, hold on, just sit down right right there on you. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Grab your legs. Is it all right for me to grab your legs? Hallelujah. Lord, in the name of Jesus. George, brother, I want you to lay your hands on until you agree with me. Lord, we pray for a skeletal miracle. Hold up my conduct of I pray you to just his legs, the pelvis area, so that that back can come into alignment. In the name of Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Strengthen her bones, healing to her bones. Healing to all her flesh in the name of Jesus. Now stand up. Stand up. Sis. Hallelujah. 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 And Lord, hallelujah. Have you had any discs been operated on or anything? Okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look, come on, brother. Get over here. Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, let these vertebrae. Oh, come on, I'm going to see that. Lord, let there be divine adjustment. You're the best chiropractor ever. You're the great physician, Lord. Let these vertebrae, muscles, and nerves be aligned and brought back into order in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Kind of move around just a little bit, sis. How's your back? Tell me. I, I, I don't want to put words in your mouth. I'm just asking. A little bit better. Can you do something that you couldn't do before? Can you move a little bit that you couldn't do before? that before? Are you having pain now when you try it? You still having pain? We're at. We're at right, right in here? Okay. Right up in here. Your shoulders? Right in there. Right in there. Okay, Lord. Relax those muscles. Nerves. Tendons. Oh, muscles. Bones in the name of Jesus. Healing to her bones. Heal those bones, Lord. Strengthen that marrow on her bones. Release. Release her from this in the name of Jesus. In the name oh, of Jesus. Now move again, sis. Hallelujah. Just take your time. Don't do anything you don't feel comfortable with doing. your legs. Your legs feel a little stronger than they did? Okay. Well, let's praise God for what improvement you have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, I just pray you to help her, that you sanctify her, that you seal her, that you give her comfort and assurance in her life. In, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I pray you clear up any breathing problems. 
and her lungs. Laura, did you ooh, bring healing and deliverance to that in the name of Jesus? In the name of Jesus. In any issues in her pancreas, bring healing and recovery to that in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Let her spirit, her soul, and her body be preserved, Lord. Oh, in the name of Jesus, a new lease on life in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Did you have an issue with your lungs? Okay. okay. You try to breathe. I, I, I ask people to breathe or, or whatever the situation is because there's times that it happens instantly. You breathe. Can you breathe better? I don't want to put words in your mouth. Tell me no if it means no. Or yes if it means yes. Or it's a little better. It's a little better. Huh? Okay, I understand. 
has the hand now. Raise your hand up. Raise your hand up. Raise your hand up. Okay, it's more range of motion. Okay, I don't want to put words in your mouth. No, no, I don't. Yeah, I, you know, I don't, because I, I can intimidate people. I don't want to. No, do. I wouldn't lie about okay, it. Okay, I know, I know. Okay, good, good. Okay. That's a spiritual gift I have. Yeah. Okay, the journey of the spirit. That's good. Let's address the eyes. Okay. I know you didn't ask about the eyes. That's true. I am almost blind. Oh. Supernatural okay. miracle. Oh, thank you, Lord. <laughs> oh, my man, the cornea. In the name of Jesus. Form, fashion, repair in the... Oh, oh. Hallelujah. 
it up for a reason. I was going to spring something. Okay, that's I'll right. prove what the Lord has done for me six oh, years ago. Tell, tell, tell it, tell it. Okay, tell I used to be all okay, never mind. We've run out of room. Okay, go ahead and tell it anyway. Just anyway, take it. He'll, he'll prove it. Over at the other place, the other I was taking pain pills from my back every three days. Now you'd be lucky to see me take one every six months. I believe it. That's right. But you're not going to advice. No. I'm going to advise them. 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 Prophet Rick Reagan and Linda Reagan, your prophecies, they've been my friends many years now. God released them today. Me and Betty and Alicia, every member of Lisa Brethren Church, God from the north, south, east, to west, they're your prophets to the nation. They will shake the nation for your glory. They, they will see you, Jesus, the Dr. Jesus, the great physician of Bob McGee. They will see the miracle signs and wonders of Jesus. The, the blind eyes will see, the lame will walk, the, the deaf will hear, the dumb will speak, and, and resurrect the dead these last days. Do you know what you promised them? I'll give other words over, and this is the time of your jubilee year. This is the time of your release. I release them. I release them. I release them. And God to your 48 states and to your nation, to their, your prophets, they ain't genuine. They've been through persecutions. They've been your humble servants. They've had trials and they've been at some uh, hard times financially, but this is the breakthrough today. The hundredfold blessings, the King Solomon blessings, the Abraham blessings, Jehoshaphat blessings, just not spiritually, but financially. The many blessings of God that preach your heart out, that pray their heart out for your glory, that prophesy their heart out. This is your hour, this is your time, this is your destiny. What Jesus promised you many years ago, this is the time, time is short. Jesus returning soon, and this is the prayer. I release a new prophetic mantle, a new double anointing, a double blessing, a new prophetic mantle, elect thy mantle, fall double portion on. Prophet Rick and Prophetess Linda Reagan, they are your servants. Don't open the door for the churches on radio, TV, and internet. I know they have their website. This is a new beginning, a new opening for your glory, Lord Jesus. We lift them up to you, cover with the blood of Jesus, no weapon from the gift will prosper. We thank you for your Holy Ghost and for your anointing, Lord Jesus. Let it flow, flow. They'll flow with the Holy Ghost. They'll flow with your presence, your anointing. Like the Old Nile, the Amazon, the Jordan River, the Old Mississippi, the Ohio, the Missouri River. They'll flow. You'll go to wash them and sanctify them and dedicate them and, and for your glory, God. They are your humble servants. We put them up your golden order today and they receive this word for your glory and you're going to perform it. And we thank you in Jesus' holy name. Give Jesus the best hand clap. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise your holy name. Thank you. In your spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise your holy name. I love you. Praise your holy name. I get to hear it. When the dog on the father's kids, it's been loud. Well, that's the